Licorice Pizza is the new film by Paul Thomas Anderson, the director behind some of my favorite movies, such as There Will Be Blood and Boogie Nights. I didn't know what to expect going into this film, but I suppose I had moderately high expectations. You see, I went with a cinephile friend who has now seen it six times. That's right, six times. This screening I attended with him has now broken his record for a movie seen in theaters the most amount of times. Paul Thomas Anderson is his favorite director, after all. This now shattered record of his was previously held by La La Land, which, of course, he paid five times to see. As a side note, my current record is Life of Pi, which resulted in five trips to the movie theater. Anyway, this friend was begging me to see it, and once he told me how many times he saw it, I couldn't say no. Paul Thomas Anderson, or PTA as he's commonly referred to, has been a filmmaker I greatly admire, but I haven't been in love with everything he's done. I adore Boogie Nights, and I adore There Will Be Blood, but I have mixed feelings for The Master, although I appreciate for what it was trying to do, and I'm not at all a fan of his most recent film, Phantom Thread. So as you can gather, I had no clue what I'd think of Licorice Pizza, but to my surprise, I liked it. It's more entertaining than The Master, though it's not as deep or as haunting as that film, and it's definitely better than Phantom Thread. It's not something I could see six times in the theater, unlike my friend. Nevertheless, uh, PTA has made a satisfying film that could have been great, but it's good enough. Licorice Pizza is set in Southern California in the 1970s, which is a time and place uh, PTA likes to use a lot in his films. And regarding that time period, the soundtrack was not a disappointment. I love me some groovy tunes from the 70s, and the track list here is really solid. I swear by Boogie Nights as having the most eargasmic soundtrack for a 70s set movie, but even though PTA's selection of songs for Licorice Pizza isn't as sensational, it's still strong. The use of Let Me Roll It by Paul McCartney is the standout track and is used to great effect. So what else is good? Well, the acting is excellent. The performances by our two leads are equally remarkable. There are scenes where these two actors really have to give it their all, and PTA does not cut away to something else. They both are in camera for lengthy periods of time, proving that these two youthful performers really know their craft. The male protagonist is played by the son of the late Philip Seymour Hoffman, an acting legend who PTA loved working with, and if only he was still alive to see what his son has accomplished here. No doubt the casting here in particular will draw comparisons to James Gandolfini's son in The Many Saints of Newark. Let's see what else is there. PTA's recreation of 1970s California is utterly believable. From the costume design, to the production design, to the casting of extras and actors, I genuinely had to remind myself I wasn't watching a film made in the decade in question. The dialogue is very funny and charming in some parts, but also very offbeat in other parts. And that's where we run into some of the problems with Licorice Pizza. Despite the film being a bit of a slow burn throughout, the first half has far more narrative focus than the second half. Once we get to that second half, the film takes a really offbeat, quirky, tonal shift. There are individual scenes that exemplify this tonal shift that are engaging to watch while they're happening, but don't really amount to anything in the long run. I'm not saying Licorice Pizza is pointless, but I was expecting a little bit more from PTA's script. PTA has never been a director who focused on the three-act structure. But even something like There Will Be Blood or Boogie Nights 
two films of his that weren't really all that plot-driven at least amounted to something on a basic storytelling level. To put it simply, Licorice Pizza has an engrossing first act, a strange second act that's fun to watch, and a third act that's rather underwhelming, but I suppose ends on a satisfying note? And I think that word summarizes Licorice Pizza best. Satisfying. Not amazing, not mind-blowing, just satisfying. Paul Thomas Anderson has given us a charming, odd, and moderately engaging slice-of-life comedy drama that breathes life into its time and place. It's in no way a masterpiece, but it's a step in the right direction for the legendary filmmaker who always knows how to captivate an audience to varying degrees with whatever he puts out. I give Licorice Pizza... Three out of four stars.